with Dark Phoenix coming out pretty soon. I'm going to try to re-review every X-Men movie there has been to date, at least most of them. And today, we're going to be starting off with X-Men, the one that started it all, the one that came out 19 years ago. I'm old. Before I go on, don't forget to SMASH that like button. SMASH that share button. And if you're new here, SMASH that subscribe button so you can watch more reviews like this one. And give a little tap to the gray bell icon for notifications on my latest uploads. Back to the review. Now, for the longest time, comic book movies in like the 90s were a complete joke. Like you had Spawn, you had Batman and Robin, you had Steel. Like, it was a dead time for comic book superhero films. But then, along came X-Men, which tackled the comic book genre in a little bit of a more serious tone and tried to tackle, you know, issues. Like, issues we have in the real world, like racism and prejudice. And X-Men was beloved by everyone. Critics loved it and said it was a fresh new take on the comic book movie genre. And to an extent, that is true. X-Men was very revolutionary in trying to make superhero movies a little bit more serious and trying to tackle real issues. But if I'm going to be honest, X-Men doesn't really hold up all that well in my opinion. It's not awful, but it's not that great either. Uh, let me start off with a good first. For one, the opening scene where, you know, there's like a concentration camp and there's young Magneto. Oh my god. That scene is so good. I have to really think about it because I have to think on the history of comic book movie scenes. But this might be one of the best scenes in any comic book superhero film. It says everything you need to know about Magneto and sets up his character really, really well. And of course, you can't talk about X-Men movies without talking about Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. This is one of the best casting choices for any comic book film. What Hugh Jackman brought to this character is still talked about today. And as a little fun fact, Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart both hold the record for the longest time playing a live-action superhero in film. I feel like he honestly gets better with every film. Like, even in the really bad X-Men movies, he's still the best part of them. But let's get into a lot of the problems I have with X-Men. For one... For a superhero film, the action isn't good. It's really not. The fights are either too practical, and I'll get to the reasons why here in a bit, or they use CGI, but the CGI is so bad that it really pulls me out of the film. Now, when I say the fights are too practical, here's what I'm talking about. Some characters you can have practical fights with, like Batman. Like the like if especially if you've seen Batman v Superman. You know that the action with Batman in that movie was fantastic. Probably the best Batman action we've ever seen. And in Captain America the Winter Soldier, clearly, you know, practical fighting really helped out in that. But the reason why it works for Batman and Captain America is because they're not really that super powered. I mean, yeah, they're very strong, but really, when it comes to fighting, they just fight like regular people. So, like, you don't need to have a bunch of strings or whatnot, or at the very least, like, you don't need to make them fly and try to do stuff. In X-Men, there's a lot of super-powered characters, and really, practical fighting doesn't work. It's not even hand-to-hand -hand combat. Like, for example, like, when, you know, Storm is, is doing her thing, it's really boring to look at. Again, for a superhero film that's supposed to be action-filled, this isn't really a good action movie. I have the same problem with movies like the first Spider-Man movie and Superman 2. When they try to do practical fighting, it really doesn't work because these characters are supposed to be larger than life. They are supposed to do things that are incredible. Which is why in like every other Spider-Man movie after the first one and Man of Steel, the action became so fascinating to watch because the CGI was good enough to let loose and just have all the creativity of the X-Men just flow out and so that we can see them do some cool shit. But with X-Men, no. The action is, like I said, is just very boring to watch. And this wouldn't be nearly as bad if, you know, maybe we got some really good character development. But we really don't. 
Again, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine is really cool. And, you know, Magneto, you've seen his backstory. But no one else is really that interesting. Like, do I really give a shit about Cyclops in this movie? Or... Jean Grey? Why am I supposed to care about them? They're not really made that interesting, and I don't really get a sense of their personality. Or at least, not a personality that's really memorable. And what about the villains? Well, again, Mystique? Who's she? Or what about Sabretooth? Sabretooth, I feel like, ironically enough, was more interesting in X-Men Origins Wolverine than in this one. Because all in this, like, he's just like... Arr! That's all he is in this movie! Like, Sabretooth is just, like, some big brute who... doesn't really... have a personality! He just sort of stands there and just goes... Arr! And, of course, the worst of the villains... is fucking Toad. I can't... Stan Toad. I don't like him in this movie. The makeup on him looks ridiculous. The action scenes he has are so boring because, again, this is a character who's supposed to be a larger than life, you know, being able to do things that are just incredible, but because of the limited technology, we just get him slowly jumping on wires, and again, it just looks so flat to look at. And of course, like, whenever he sticks his tongue out, the, the it's a really bad CGI effect. And he just does some weird things that I don't know if they're trying to be serious or funny. Either way, it doesn't work. Like, when he meets up with Storm or something, or Jean Grey, I don't know who it was, but he just goes... and just does a ballet dance for some reason, and it's a really shitty one. And I'm like, why are you doing this? Who are you? <sighs> Again, maybe if he had a weird kind of personality that was memorable, okay, maybe that'd be funny. But we don't know his personality. And I don't think it's because, you know, they didn't set up each of these characters' movies. No, it's just they didn't set them up well in this movie. Because you could have done that. Like, you know, Lord of the Rings set up all those characters really well. Why couldn't this one? And ironically enough, another issue I have with this movie is the politics. Here's what I'm saying. I don't mind if they're trying to tackle racism and stuff. But for some reason, they have everybody hating mutants. I'm like, this is not how politics works. When it comes to political issues, there's never just one side to anything. Everything is so polarizing in politics. If this actually were a thing, if the mutant issue was actually a thing, it would not be a one-sided argument. It would be so divided. Hell, it'd probably be the most divisive thing in American history if this were actually a thing. And this is a world where we lived in the Civil War. You take an issue like mutants, where people, you know, have superpowers genetically, you don't think that's gonna be a polarizing issue? You're dead wrong. This would be the most polarizing thing ever. And to assume that it wouldn't be is really foolish. Hell, Batman v Superman got the politics right. Because, like, when it comes to Superman, there's never one side that, you know, hates him. And there's never, you know, one single side who loves him. No, it's a completely divided issue. Some people are saying, yay, Superman, and some people are saying, nay, Superman. Like, it's not... A one, there's not one single party for anything like this. It would be really, really divisive. So yeah, I appreciate what X-Men tried to do, and I do appreciate that they tried to take comic book movies more seriously, and there's certainly some good elements in X-Men, but I don't feel like there's enough good elements for me to say that it holds up all that well. So yeah, I don't really recommend X-Men all that much. I feel like it's a bit dated. Uh, the effects aren't that good, the action is very bland to look at, the characters aren't really that well developed, and again, the political issues that they try to bring up don't really reflect the real world, so trying to have politics that try to reflect the real world but failing to do so is kind of redundant. But whatever the case, uh, have you seen X-Men? Uh, let me know down in the comments below what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a like. Share the video so we can channel circulated. Don't forget to support my Patreon on my Patreon page. Or if you can't do that, then consider supporting me through my PayPal donation button in the description below. And if you want to see more, click this.